in Shakespeare's As You Like It, the opening lines are all the worlds a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. I wanted to speak to you about this divine play. In Sanskrit, it's called Leela, meaning divine play or game. And this metaphor of life being a play or a game is actually more true and real than anything else. And so I'm going to continue with this metaphor to explain what's really going on here. If you take into consideration just a modern movie set, You'll see various actors preparing for their roles and their various parts, getting ready to take on different characters. Part of getting into character as an actor is to get very familiar with the past and the story, how the character grew up, their deepest desires, their beliefs, their conditioning. This is all part of the characterization process for an actor. You may have even heard of some Hollywood actors. They get so into the character that they literally morph into the character days before their performance and live, walk, talk, breathe, and act as if they are that character, fully taking on the persona Uh, and personality of that character persona meaning mask to take this a layer deeper the actor is actually infinite being oneness and divine presence whatever words you want to use the actor is divine presence and it's playing the role of you playing the character of you. In actuality, all the actors are divine presence. There's only one actor playing many, many roles. Just as Shakespeare said, one man in his time will play many parts. Infinite being is your true nature. And you, your true nature, is playing the role of you. The you that you believed yourself to be your entire life. And if you're listening to this video and you're on this channel, it's because you're at a point on the journey where infinite beingness, your divine nature, is ready to wake up to itself It no longer wants to be asleep to the character. It no longer wants to be identified with the character. Oneness is ready to experience itself through your avatar. The you that you've believed yourself to be is no more real than the character that's played by an actor on set. How real is that character? Does it exist? It can be very believable and it can definitely suck you in, right? When you are in the drama, when you are in the story, as if you are a character, you can get very sucked into the drama. You can feel all the emotions. You can be sucked into the comedy, the romance, the drama the horror story, whatever it is. It can be very, very, very believable. But at the end of the day, is it real? Is the character real? It's no more real than the character that's being played on set. Infinite being is playing your part and all parts and as this is seen as 
as awakening occurs to your divine nature, as the truth of your being, the underlying unity, the divine essence of that which is you is seen to be the underlying sense of unity that connects all things, all life, all characters, everything. There's nothing outside of infinite being, of oneness. And what begins to arise is a sense of compassion for all beings because you feel and sense the interconnectedness as life itself. You realize that every other apparent person on the journey is ultimately you, just wearing a different mask. And there is a divine acceptance because you realize that you have cast the perfect parts in your play. You have cast the perfect star roles and every part has been played perfectly with a stellar performance. Every performance deserves a standing ovation, an Academy Award in your play. You are the creator. You have cast all of them. And every drama and every comedy and every romance and every narrative and storyline has been played out perfectly. Because you created it. You are it. You are all things. There is nothing outside of you. The other thing that begins to occur on this is as you awaken to the oneness that you are, a lot of the phrases you may have heard over the course of your spiritual journey begin to resonate. Whereas before, you maybe you thought that you knew what they meant, but now they click. You may have heard the entire universe exists within you. And that's because you are everything. There is nothing outside of you. And so your body is existing. The body, the apparent body that you've claimed yourself to be, is existing within this spacious onenessness. Okay? This divine presence includes the physical body, all forms, and everything in between. The entire universe exists within you because you are it. You are divine presence playing the role and wearing the mask of your character, the one that you've been misidentified with your entire life as a separate sense of self that's been rooted in unworthiness, lack, scarcity, conflict, always outside seeking something to feel better or running and avoiding something that doesn't feel good. This is the dualistic nature of Maya, the illusion. There's always a right or wrong. There's always a good or bad. But as you, it becomes clear and seen and and sensed the underlying unity of all things you no longer take the play seriously and life becomes a game you still play the game you still get to engage in the game there's no escaping the game there's this is all there is is the game and the game is divine but you no longer play it as if you're this small separate self. Now you get to play it from a much larger perspective, infinite perspective, which doesn't take it as seriously. 
And this doesn't discount the relative world. It doesn't discount the world of form. Because the world of form is divine. It is oneness. There is no separation. The form is the formless. The formless is the form. It's all one. So this isn't discounting the human experience. This isn't discounting your body. This isn't discounting your personality. This isn't discounting your character. This isn't discounting any of those things. But it is seen that those things are not truly who you are. There is still a sense of all of these things, but it is seen and sensed that that is not your true identity. You are not a small separate self human having a spiritual experience. You are the infinite beingness having a human experience. And getting to experience all spectrums of the human experience through each and every being simultaneously. There's a quote by Rumi that there's always been a resonance here with. And I wanted to share it with you now. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing there is a field. I'll meet you there. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, out beyond the world of duality, where there is good or bad or right or wrong, out beyond that, there is a field. I'll meet you there. This field is an infinite field field of being. This is your divine nature. You are the infinite field of beingness of which everything arises. So one of many paradoxes on this journey is that it's not even a journey. It's the journeyless journey the pathless path to the gateless gate because you can't get to or go to where you already are and to what you already are. But it's only seen in hindsight that you are already home. So until then, it appears as a journey. And the journey is necessary until it is not. Every path to self-realization is unique. There's nothing you can quote-unquote do to get there. And in actuality, the more you attempt to try to do to get there, the further you actually are. And again, this is all very paradoxical because you can't be further from the truth and you can't be any closer to the truth. It's already here, looking through your eyes, hearing through your ears, smelling through your nose, speaking and tasting through your mouth. Divine presence, your infinite beingness, has always been here, will always be here, is the eternal nature of your being, your timeless, eternal nature. You are it. You are already home. You've never left. You just have to realize it for yourself. With a capital S.